subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Leela Bakore tutorial. In the previous part, we talked about the general characteristic features of vertebrates. Now here we will divide this vertebrata into its two subdivisions and we'll talk about one. So this vertebrata, it is divided into two subdivisions. One is anathostomata and the other is Nathostomata. And this classification is based on whether the mouth is bound or supported by jaws. So here the mouth is not supported by jaws. So they are known as jawless vertebrates. And these nathostomes, they have jaws and this group we will talk about later on. So in this part, we'll talk about this particular subdivision that is anathostomata. So we'll talk about the general features first, then we'll take one example of this. In case of anathostoma, one thing which we have understood is the mouth is not supported by the jaw. So it is a circular mouth which is normally with suctorial funnel. So they have round circular mouth with suctorial funnel. Then these anathostomes, they do not have paired appendages, do not have paired appendages and exoskeleton. That means these two things are absent. Exoskeleton is not there, endoskeleton they do have and paired appendages. And when we talk of appendages, it could be fins, it could be limbs, anything. So paired appendages are totally absent and exoskeleton is absent. Endoskeleton is made up of cartilage. They have only inner ear, that means external middle ear are absent, only inner or internal ear is present and this has one or two semicircular canals. In higher vertebrates, we'll see that there are three in each inner ear, there are three semicircular canals. So lower vertebrates either have one or two uh, semicircular canals in their inner ear. The example which we are talking about is not of this. This we will take up in the next part. So the example that we are taking of a nathostomata is petromyzon. So let us talk about petromyzon and some additional features which we see here. The body is fish-like. The mouth is anterior and they have a single nostril. Single nostril is present. Eyes and then this fish-like body, it tapers towards the posterior side. On the lateral side, we find, these are the eyes, on lateral side, we find a chain or a line of openings. These are actually gill openings or gill slit like structure. That means respiration is through internal gill. So here we'll add few features. Respiration through internal gills. Here we have said that they do not have 
exoskeleton but endoskeleton is there and paired appendages are absent. So unpaired appendage is present and that unpaired appendage is a fin which is a median fin and this fin shows these kind of projections. So one median fin is divided into three parts. This is the first dorsal fin. This is the second dorsal fin and this together would form caudal fin. So they have only one median structure that runs throughout the midline and it is divided into parts. So first dorsal which is a smaller one, the second dorsal which is little longer and the tail fin or the caudal uh, fin. If it is a male, they show sexual dimorphism. If it is a male, here we would see a copulatory papilla. And this is so seen only in case of males. So respiration is through internal gills. We do see the openings of those gills. They can be termed as gill apertures or gill slits. Endoskeleton is of cartilage and we also find there are cartilaginous rays which support these fins. So there are these cartilaginous radiating structures which support the fins. Rays. In digestive system, they have tiflosol. Tiflosol is a fold in the alimentary canal, especially in the part where absorption takes place. And this fold increases the surface area for absorption. We have talked about this tiflosol in earthworms. So where if you take a section of intestine, you find that there is a fold which is like this, so that the surface area for absorption increases. And we find this tiflosol in this. Circulatory system, if we are talking about the heart, is two chambered. There is one auricle or atrium and one ventricle. In the circulatory system itself, we will say that RBCs are circular and nucleated. So RBCs have nuclei and they are circular. We can write this because in this uh, here also because it's a general character that these anathostomes they are poikilotherms. Anathostoma is divided further but there is only one class and that one class is only a single class. This is known as cyclostoma or sometimes it is also written as cyclostomata in which we take these examples like petromyzon and one more which is mixin. One more peculiar thing which is seen in them, which is very similar to what we see in case of fishes, that they have lateral line organs. Lateral line organs are actually rheoreceptors and they help the animals to swim very close to each other. And these organs, they are present all along the lateral line of the body. And when these two fishes or these two animals swim together, the water between them, between these two animals, when they try to come closer, this water exerts pressure. And that is detected by these lateral line organs. And that is why you must have seen when these fishes, they swim in a big group also, they don't collide with each other. That is because of these lateral line organs. Number of cranial nerves is 8 or 10 pairs. 
these are some special characteristic features of a nathostomata which has only one class that is cyclostoma. We will take one more example. One was this petromyzon and the details are here. The other example is myxin which is commonly known as hagfish. Myxin or hagfish. Here the mouth is surrounded by oral tentacles. So this is an additional thing. Mouth surrounded with or surrounded by oral tentacles. And this myxin is a borer. That means it bores through the body of other fishes and feeds on the soft tissue. So they are called borers. And when we say they're feeding on soft tissues, we also write the general character as that they are sanguivores. So again, it can be added here that they are sanguivores. That means the ones which feed on blood. So this is a borer. And one more important thing about hagfish is that it is the only vertebrate which is osmoconformer. All vertebrates are osmoregulators. That means we are able to regulate the internal concentration of ions, minerals and water which we say osmotic balance. But hagfish changes its concentration of the ions and water inside the body according to the outer medium. So this is a unique feature only for hagfish. So all vertebrates are osmoregulators. It is osmoconformer. So this is a nathostoma, which is one subdivision of vertebrata. Now in the, in the next part, we'll talk about nathostoma. That means in these animals, the mouth is supported by jaws and then they are further divided into subgroups.